I recently had a car come in for tuning that immediately had some problems. Come on, you piece of sh And come to find out that we were off by only 3% on one sensor, and it was enough to essentially make the car untunable, and it would cause you to run around in circles until the end of time unless you fixed it. Considering how easy it is to think that 3% might not be that big of a deal. So by the end of this video, hopefully if you guys have this exact same problem, you're able to fix it. And if not, more importantly, it will just give you like a bigger, like more broad overview of how all of this EFI stuff works together. And by one thing being off, can really cause a bunch of problems and sometimes even in kind of areas that seem like they maybe wouldn't go hand in hand with the actual problem. I figure the best way to walk you through this process, we will discuss kind of what the vehicle was doing when I first pulled it into the shop, what it was doing after I loaded a calibration that I made for it, and then show you how much of a difference that one thing being off by 3% can make. And then I'll show you how we kind of eliminated what seemed to be numerous different problems all going on at the same time without actually having to spend any money or swap out any parts just by temporarily modifying some things within the software to really pinpoint what our problem is. Let's go take a look at the car. So when I first pulled this into the shop and it started okay, it idled pretty bad, which is pretty normal. And as it warmed up just a little bit, it started surging real bad, again, pretty normal and just simply putting it from park into drive, it stalled out and uh, I think it shut off two or three times trying to pull it in. Uh, pretty par for the course for cars that are coming to get tuned, so I didn't think too much of it at that point in time. So after loading the file into it that I made that theoretically should have ran significantly better or I kind of hoped and thought, uh, it did not. So at that point I actually went back to the original file and started moving things around to start troubleshooting. But uh, let's start it up and we'll log it and we'll take a look at the log and see kind of what we were up against and how I knew we needed to start troubleshooting rather than to start tuning. So I don't know how well you can hear, but it's actually not running that bad. But but the idle is surging. And if you look here at the IAC position, it's going crazy. And it's trying to add a bunch of IAC position even though our actual RPM is higher than our target idle RPM, which is kind of backwards. And that's when I decided it was time to start troubleshooting. So after having to file in the car with idle settings that I know shouldn't be surging, uh, just the first thing I did without even looking any further at anything was just simply disable the idle control valve. Uh, I'd like to turn things on and off. A lot of times it's just a quick way to uh, see what's actually going on. So let's see if I can show you how to do that and if you, the camera will pick up the difference in how it runs. So if we just simply go to the idle tab and then we go here to IAC type and just simply click on none. You can hear how much more stable the idle is. So at this point, I very seriously doubt the camera would pick it up so I'm not even going to bother trying but even though the idle was more stable it sounded like it had a intermittent misfire so I went through that kind of process and uh, I guess spoiler alert here is once I figured out what was going on I felt like an idiot for not catching it sooner but as you'd expect it uh, had no misfires everything checked out there so at that point I actually started logging and uh, taking a look at what was going on and I noticed two things so I'll show you one with the car running and then in the data log and we'll talk about what we're looking at. So this is what the idle control valve turned off and ultimately running relatively good other than what sounds like a little bit of a miss. But look here on the screen at the air fuel and the big ones are the fuel flow and the injector pulse width. Uh, I don't know again how fast the computer screen is gonna pick this up, but we're jumping from like two to seven milliseconds back and forth like crazy and uh, the duty cycle is going crazy, and so obviously the fuel flow is looking crazy. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the data log. So this here is just pretty wild looking, and at this point it was pretty clear there's no tuning this until this is corrected. And uh, this is our duty cycle, our pulse width, and our fuel flow. But you can see down at the bottom, our fuel flow is jumping from eight pounds to 30 pounds. 
Uh, so this thing is just kind of running all over the place. All right, here's the part where I show you by something meeting off by 3%, or you can almost even argue 2% is enough to cause all of these problems. So let's take a look real quick. Uh, if you look here, our TPS is jumping uh, between one and 3% or zero and 3%. And two things are happening as a result of that. The first, because the TPS is jumping up over 2%, it's actually kicking the idle control essentially in and out of idle control and going into the IEC hold. And uh, it's just running around in circles and flipping out. But let me pull up another channel and we'll see why the fueling is going crazy. So look at our TPS ROC, which is TPS rate of change. And if you're not familiar with what that is, that is essentially, turn this thing off so it'll shut up. That is essentially what is activating and turning our acceleration enrichment on and off. So now if we go into our fuel flow, or our fuel tab rather, acceleration enrichment. The first thing that I did to try to attempt to, you know, just kind of see what we're up against uh, is if you change the AE versus TPS blanking, we just max that out at like 15. Sometimes if the, the sensors do glitch just a little bit, this isn't that uncommon of a thing. It's just a little bit too much, I guess. And uh, going from seven is kind of like the typical starting point, uh, but maxing it out, going all the way up to 15, basically made no difference whatsoever. At this point, it was blatantly obvious what the problem is and what we were up against, as you just saw with the TPS rate of change and the pulse width and fuel flow and everything kind of matching and going nuts. Uh, but again, I like to quadruple verify things as in many ways as I can before I start throwing parts and really start digging into troubleshooting. So I'll show you kind of what I did next to just really cement in the fact that it was just an acceleration enrichment problem that was causing the fueling problems. So if we go here into our TPS rate of change, this is in pounds per hour. So we can zero this out. Our TPS versus coolant temp, this is a percentage based multiplier. So uh, we will set this to 100, which is the equivalent of zero. And then our AE correction versus TPS, again, this is percentage based. So we'll just go 100. Nope, we'll send this to the ECU. Once this does its thing, then uh, we'll watch this real time again. So now you can see that the TPS rate of change is still going crazy because we didn't fix the problem. But let's take a look at the actual fuel flow and see if we corrected it that way. So down here, we don't even need to look at a log. You can just see what you need to see here. But look at how much more, more stable our fuel flow is and our injector pulse width is. And uh, the air fuel is always going to move a little bit, but you can see it's within reason. And even now the closed loop comp is uh, one, it's at a very reasonable number. It's next to nothing. Uh, but before, because closed loop will turn off with acceleration enrichment, uh, the actual closed loop was like on off, on off, on off, on off. So uh, yeah, at this point, um, actually haven't fixed it yet. Uh, we're gonna try a sensor first because it's the easiest thing to do. Uh, but outside of that, it might just be some wiring or you know whatever it is, we still gotta figure it out. But uh, we've narrowed it down that our problem is 100% just related to the TPS sensor. And we don't have to worry about troubling any of the other things that it kind of seemed like potentially could have been the problem. So this TPS sensor just totally exploded uh, once I took the bolts out and it's like seized onto the shaft. I can't even get it off. It's gonna take a little creativity. So I feel pretty comfortable saying that that's going to be our problem. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when the TPS sensor is not freaking out. This is running like a whole new car. The sensor itself was bad, which I think was a result of the throttle body shaft being too big and the sensor kind of being like forced onto the shaft. So that's what it looks like having a sensor being off by 3%. It can wreak havoc on everything. So I filmed that super quick and lazy because I'm in the middle of working. And uh, ultimately, I just thought it was a cool opportunity to show you guys a couple things I could discuss earlier. And I figure if this can help out one person, then it was worthwhile. So hopefully we can just film a full video on this car. These old trucks are cool.